Hi, yeah. this is the first set of examples for lesson two of the graphs and transformations pack. Now you've done transformations at school, like up and down and left and right, so this should be quite straightforward, hopefully. Right then, let's have a look what it says. So it says you must label the new coordinates of the key points. Um, now I've got an equation here which is x squared plus 2x. So I'd argue that my roots are x is 0 and x is minus 2 from there, which they are. Now then, what I think I'm going to work with is the minimum point here, which is minus 1, minus 1. So instead of having x squared plus 2x, I'm going to see it as x plus 1 all squared minus 1 in completing the squared form. That's exactly the same. I'm going to track what happens to the vertex and the y-intercept. So I'm not going to bother with the roots because the roots can get messy. Right, let's have a look. So my f of x, I'm taking to be x plus 1 all squared minus 1. Right, let's have a look at this then. Okay. Right. So the first one is a plus 2. So I'm adding 2 to the y values. So that means it's shifting it up by 2. In the olden days, you could say shift it up by 2, but you can't anymore. You have to say a translation of 0, 2. And you should have seen that notation at GCSE. Right, so let's think about the graph. So there's my graph. The vertex is minus 1, minus 1. So I shift all the y values up by 1, by 2, sorry, and my vertex is minus 1, 1. The y-intercept is 0. So if that shifts up, it goes up to 2. So my graph now would look like that. So that would be a 2, and that would be minus 1, 1. In terms of the equation, it's f of x plus 2. So it would be x minus, oh sorry, x plus 1 squared minus 1. And then I'm adding 2 to it. So my equation would become x add 1 squared add 1. And that makes sense. All right, let's have a look at the next one. So the next one says minus 3. So the y value has gone down by 3. So this would be a translation of 0 minus 3. There. Right, so the vertex was at minus 1, minus 1. So the vertex is now minus 1, minus 4. The y-intercept was 0. So now the y-intercept is minus 3. So I now have a curve going like that. So there's a minus 3. There's a minus 1, minus 4. I could track the roots as well, but I don't need to. Right. So in terms of what the equation looks like, it'd be y equals x plus 1 squared minus 1. And then I'm taking 3 off it. So my new equation would be y equals x add 1 squared minus 4. And that matches if you look at the vertex again. Right, next bit. There. So I'm still using y equals x add 1 squared minus 1 with a vertex of minus 1 minus 1. Right then. If it's a minus 1, you'd think it goes to the left, but it doesn't. It goes to the right. So it would be a translation of 1, 0. So it shifts to the right. The reason being is that when you come to solve it, you put that bracket equal to 0, and the x minus 1 equals 0 would become x equals 1. So I'm adding 1 onto the x values. So my vertex was minus 1, minus 1. So if it shifts to the right, my vertex is now 0, minus 1. There. What I'm doing with this is I'm replacing x with x minus 1. So my equation was y equals, now instead of x, I've got x minus 1. Then I've got plus 1 squared minus 1. So I've replaced the x with an x minus 1. If I tidy that up, it becomes, oops, I did it right on the other page, do the same. It becomes y equals 
x squared minus 1, which matches with a graph, doesn't it? All right, so let's have a look at this one then. So you look at that, you think plus 3, so you think it's going to the right 3, but it isn't, it's going to the left 3. So that'll be a translation. Minus 3, 0, there. So I'm replacing x with x plus 3. There. Right, let's draw the picture. So the vertex was minus 1, minus 1. I've shifted 3 to the right, so it's going to be, uh, where am I now? Oh, no, sorry, I'm going left out of 3. So minus 1, minus 1 becomes minus 4, minus 1. There, so it's going, I'll have to draw through the middle of my graph, I think. I'll do it in a different colour so it stands out. Here we go. There. So that will be minus 4, minus 1, because it's gone left 3. There. Okay. My equation would become y equals, so x is replaced with x plus 3. Then I've got my plus 1, all squared minus 1. So I've got y equals, if I tidy it up, x plus 4, all squared minus 1. And that matches that the vertex is minus 4, minus 1. Now I said I'd track where the y-axis went, or the y-intercept is. So if I imagine that the x is 0, I've got a 4 squared is 16. Take 1 is 15. There. All right, then. Um, the bottom of the page is one where it's a translation of both. So my vertex of minus 1, minus 1. So if you look at this, it's going to be a translation of minus 1, minus 2. Because the exit changes, it goes the wrong way, but the y stays the same. So my vertex will be transformed. So it's going left 1 and down 2. So it'll be minus 2, minus 3, my vertex. So I draw the graph. Oops. That's going to be minus 2, minus 3. Right. Let's have a look at the equation. So y is, so instead of x, it's x add 1. Yep. And then I had a plus 1 squared, minus 1. And then I'm taking off a minus 2. So I've got y equals x add 2 squared, minus 3. There we go. And that matches because your vertex is minus 2, minus 3 from completing the square. Checking where it crosses on the y-intercept. If x is 0, I've got 2 squared is 4. Take 3 makes 1. There. Put it here. So y-intercept. x is 0. Do it properly so you know where it's coming from. 0 plus 2 squared minus 3. Right then, that's probably good enough for the first set of examples for the second lesson.